What's up guys, I've got a really interesting one for you today, which is we're gonna geek out over the stat of three amazing world record holders in the women's hour record. So today we're talking about Victoria Boosie, who got the record from Evelyn Stevens, who in turn got the record from Bridie O'Donnell, the Australian rider. So Victoria set a record on 13th of December 2018 at Agua Salientes, Mexico. Apologies for the pronunciation. She rode 48 kilometers in one hour, beating Evelyn Stevens by only 27 meters. Such a narrow victory. There are so many amazing things about Victoria's amazing effort. I don't know where to start really. First of all, this is a really smart lady. She's got a PhD in mathematics. She tried three times for the hour record, but she actually tried twice in consecutive days. She's only the second person to do that. She's actually coming from a runner triathlete background. She had probably the narrowest winning margin, 27 meters, or around about, what, two seconds at 48 kilometers an hour, or about 0.06% over that effort. And perhaps the most amazing thing of all is she's only been cycling five years. How about that? I can't get my head around that. She's only been cycling five years and she's got the world hour record. That is unbelievable, really. Okay, now we have most of Victoria's data because she's made various tweets. She's given a few interviews. Basically, her effort is described. You know, her equipment is described. For example, basic facts, she's around about five foot six or 167 centimeters, 132 pounds or around 60 kilos. She wore the Endura encapsulator speed suit, the Aeroswitch helmet. She had an optimized drivetrain, you know, immersion technique with molten speed wax. She had double discs on the wheels. She had Victoria piece to control tires. Everything was set up for this amazing effort pretty much perfectly. And what that adds up to is a really, really low CDA. Now the CDA is not published. Obviously you should have done wind tunnel testing or the equivalent track testing you know under controlled conditions but we estimate her cda to be you know around a good case scenario 0 0.183 now we've done worst case calculations 0 0.19 0 0.195 but for the purpose of this main calculation here i'm going to use 0 0.183 now we do have some kind of external validation of this because roughly 10 years ago now Jason Austin went for the Masters Category 2 World Hour record and his CDA at 60 kilos was actually 0.185 measured on the track based on his normalized power output of around about 300 watts during his effort. So Jason's stats, if you like, provide an anchor for this one and Jason's stats are described online. So what does that mean in terms of the stats? Well, before I tell you, why don't you ever think what watts, well that's, that's a tongue twister, what watts would be required in order to get the world record in the women's hour record? What do you think it is? Given Wiggins' probable watts output for one hour was around about 420, 430, 440, what do you think it is required for a woman's hour record? Do you think it's 300, 250, 200? You tell me what you think it is. And I'll tell you what we think it is from our calculations. Okay, number one thing, aero drag. Aero drag's the thing holding you back. Mostly, you know, it takes up 80, 90% of all watt drainage on you. So the aero drag is key. We work out that aero, aero drag is 213 watts. Why so low? Well, it's low because she rode at altitude, isn't it? She rode at 1800 and 80 meters in Mexico. The oxygen pressure is around about 78% of that sea level. The aero gain is basically a linear equation. You know, the amount of gain is equivalent to the reduction in air density. Now, that's not to say the speed goes up that much because that's a factor of the cube root of the change in density. However, the aero drag is definitely low and we work out that to go 48 kilometers an hour, you need about 213 watts. Now there's the drivetrain drag, but this is optimized. So we're gonna say seven watts, rolling resistance, good quality tire on wooden track. That's extremely low. I would say around 21 watts. And you've also got the rotational drag of the wheels, which is also low because of the double disc. I'd say 11 watts. And there is an acceleration. It's not a perfectly constant speed because of the banking, etc. 
and also variations in pacing. So we're going to say 6 watts for accelerations. And the total power required comes to 258 watts, we estimate. Now before you go, oh, that's way too low, just consider for a second, there is a catch, which is that at that altitude, there's a low oxygen partial pressure, and that means your VO2 max, your aerobic capacity is reduced. Now if you acclimatize over weeks or months, the reduction is modest, around about 5%, but if you go there for a few days, the reduction is about 10%. So let's say she acclimatized over a week or two, that would be about 7% acclimatization effect. So it would mean it did feel harder for her. 258 watts wouldn't feel like 258 watts. It would feel more like 276 watts. But the take home message is the power to weight ratio for that effort for the world record would be around 4.3 watts per kilo. And some people say yes, and this is probably correct, watts over CDA is a better metric we would work that out as to 1410, 1410. Okay, now that's Victoria Boosie's world record, but she only just beat Evelyn Stevens by 27 meters, remember? So we can calculate Evelyn's stats based on her attempt. Now, as it happened, she also rode at altitude. She rode at Colorado Springs, which is 1840 meters, very similar to Mexico. So we work out her aero drag is 214 watts, drivetrain losses 7 watts, rolling resistance, now this is the problem here, she rode on a concrete track and that's about 10 watts up at 60 kilos but she's 56 kilos so we work that at 29 watts of drag which is quite significant. Rotational drag 11, acceleration will say the same 6 watts, so total power required is around 266 watts acclimatization effect again we don't know the length of time that she spent there but let's say a week or two that would be let's say nine percent acclimatization effect 290 watts required by Evelyn Stevens so that with 56 kilos would be 5.1 watts per kilo watts per CDA of around about 1584 which is actually quite a lot more than Victoria Boosie now Evelyn in turn beat Bridie O'Donnell who did 46.882 now think about Bridie's effort, she did this in Adelaide at pretty much sea level. Let's assume for a second she did manage to do the same speed, 48 kph. If you work it out, the aero drag would be huge at sea level, around about 264 watts. Drivetrain 6, wooden track 21 watts CRR, rotational drag 11, acceleration 6, total power required, ooh that would be large, that stings a little bit, 308 watts guys. Watts per kilo would be 4.8, watts per CDA 1683, which is pretty much getting to the unobtainable territory, which is why she didn't attain 48, she did 46.9. 46.9, if you redo it, 248, 8 watts drivetrain, 20 watts rolling, 11 watts rotation, 6 watts acceleration. Total required, a little bit more achievable, 289 watts. However, even that is on the high side but she had a little trick up her sleeve and that was she rode on a crazy low air pressure day storm conditions it said that outside the low air pressure was around about 1.00 or 1.15 during her attempt that's kilograms per meter cube to be accurate about it so that means that we can redo the calculations and believe it or not just that reduction in air pressure in like storm conditions means that she would have saved effectively 20 to 30 watts right there in aero drag. So aero drag probably would have been around about 228 watts. And if you add it up, total effort required then maybe around 269 watts total, but it could have been as low as 249 or 259 watts. Okay, so we've spent a long time talking about power and its components, for example, aero drag, rolling resistance, drivetrain, acceleration requirements, all that kind of stuff, which is totally fine because I'm sure that's what you guys are fundamentally interested in. But we haven't talked that much about gear choice, you know, development, lap speed, lap times, that kind of thing, those kind of basics. Now, whilst we talk about that, I've got an awesome little simulation for you that we've created here at Fast Fitness Tips and I'm going to set that going now. So this simulation really tells you how close those awesome riders were to each other 
In other words, how closely they tracked each other during this this event. Obviously, they did them separately in quite difficult, different conditions. So for them to go this close, for the differences between them to be this narrow, i.e. a difference of, you know, for example, between Boosie and Stevens of 0.6% or between Boosie and O'Donnell of only about 2.5%. It shows you what an amazing effort it is over an hour. So let's set this simulation going. Keep an eye on this in the background because this tracks their time, you know, their lap times as far as we can tell. Now, speaking of lap times, we can fire up a little calculator that we've created, our velodrome calculator. And what this enables us to do is to look at some of the basic stats of their rides. And you'll find a link to this on the description below. I'm making this widely available from today. So let's have a quick look at this calculator together. Let's have a look at Boosie versus O'Donnell. So you put the speed in at the top 48 versus 46.75 in this case. You can put the event duration. You can change that if you want. Put the gearing, which is known for some riders. I've listed some on the right hand side. Put also the wheel size, the tire obviously makes a difference in terms of development, how far you move forward with each crank rotation. Velodrome size you can alter, so some people rode like 333 meter velodrome, but let's put 250 for this one. So it looks like that Boosie needed 97.1 cadence um, to achieve this. Her lap times were around 18.75 roughly per lap. Uh, number of laps laps needed 192 you know the, look at the tiny difference in laps needed but if we change the size of the velodrome to 333 obviously the laps needed change significantly also the lap times obviously change significantly for for a laugh let's just compare Boosie with Wiggins Wiggins 54.526 he rode 58.14 let's say um, London 250 meters obviously not altitude Wow, that's interesting. Look at his cadence. He needed 105 RPM, lapping at around 6.5 seconds per lap. Number of laps needed num around about 218. So you can use this little calculator to have a play around with. I'll put the link in the description below and you can change all the variables to suit yourself. For example, if you fancy yourself taking on one of these events in the future, even at you know amateur, pro-am level, then you can put in your, your basic stats here too. Now I want to mention guys, having made this video, run our simulations and done our calculations, we've been sent, don't ask where, the actual power file from Bridie, uh, Bridie O'Donnell's effort. And it turns out that um, our calculations are pretty accurate it seems, because Bridie's effort, according to her own data, comes in around 264 watts for her effort. Well, actually somewhere between 264 and 267. Uh, lactate threshold, I believe, is around 267 for one hour tested. So what that means is our simulation, which is estimated for Bridie 269, was probably around 0.7 to 2% inaccurate. In other words, 98 to 99% accurate. In other words, the accuracy was within like a 1% basically of the actual value according to Bridie's own power data. Now we don't have the power data for the other riders, but this is another like secondary validation to suggest that our figures are in the right, right ballpark. They're, you know, pretty accurate as far as we can tell. But if anyone has the data and believes we've got a miscalculation, for sure, send me, send me the data and I'll have a look at it and I'll, that would be much appreciated. Oh yeah, oh, I noticed our simulation still running in the background. How many laps have they done so far? Well, you can see color coded. We've got Victoria Boosie in red. We've got Evelyn Stevens in blue and we've got Bridie O'Donnell in green. So you, you can see how many laps that they've done so far. I might just speed this up a little bit so we can go to the end, but you can see they're still tracking each other, you know, so closely. It's amazing, really amazing that the effort that these girls put in. Okay guys, I appreciate that. that's a lot of stats today on nerding out over these world records from three amazing women. None of these stats take away how hard it is to do this effort. If you think it's easy, set up your bike on a turbo trainer, try and ride one hour, non-stop, no brakes, continuous pedaling, in the aero tuck position and you'll find out if you haven't already done so, how hard it is to keep going for an hour. So these are three supreme efforts, amazing congratulations here. Who will be the next record holder in the future? Who knows? But I can tell you one thing, 
you get a massive advantage going to altitude despite the fact that you do have a decrement in your VO2 max, but that is somewhat offset by acclimatization. I hear the next record attempt might be from Alex Dowser, who wants to revisit his previous record, which he held for a brief time, but this time he wants to do it, I hear, maybe at altitude. So we'll see what gains he gets. Give me your comments, guys, below. What do you think on my stats? What do you think on the world record hour attempt? Who do you think will do the next hour? Check out our Patreon site if you can, it's purely optional. And until next time guys, stay safe out there, have a great ride and give us a like or share if you think we've done something good here. Take care.